Good afternoon. Uh, it's July 5th at approximately 12.35 p.m. I want to say everybody, hopefully everybody had a good happy 4th of July. Uh, I know we did. Um, I was invited this morning to speak at the San Jose District Courthouse uh, to speak at the Justice for Vanessa uh, rally that's going on down there. The, and that's uh, in support of Vanessa Guillen, uh, the soldier who went missing in April. Um, and who we had re just recently found out that her co-worker had murdered her. Um, and then his friend, a civilian, had helped him uh, dismember and dispose of her body. Naturally, this is absolutely horrific. Um, and this co-worker of hers, this individual, had he not taken his life, would have met a very swift uh, justice. <laughs> I almost want to say, hey, bravo to everybody who's, um, who's, who's rallying and, and, and calling for justice. Um, justice was served. Uh, um, he is dead. However, I wish that he would have died by the hands of the army and not his own, because believe me, it would have been a, um, they would have crucified him over this. Um, all those involved, uh, it sounds as though there might have been some kind of a cover up, maybe in house kind of thing. Um, that's just according to me, uh, from the, what, what I read, and I can assure you that um, all military members who fall, they fall under the the jurisdiction of the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice, um, and it is no joke. It is black and white. You do the crime, bam, you're going to get consequences and you will be held accountable for that. And, and many times along with that, um, the UCMJ will hit you a lot harder than what your, your crime actually was. I worked military police transports um, very early on in my career before I went into the special operations uh, field. And I remember someone who had... Uh, got into a domestic with his wife and was caught with drugs. Um, here in, the, in, our, in, our, in our world, in the civilian world, he probably would have had a slap on the wrist, right? Um, he got 12 years in a federal state prison for only doing drugs, and, but also, you know, battering his wife. Uh, yeah, 12 years in federal prison, and you will do all 12 years. There is no good behavior, you will do the time. So um, I can assure you that the consequences would have been absolutely dire, and they will be. Um, looking at Fort Hood, from the general on down to uh, private first class Vanessa's uh, direct supervisors, they will all be fired. People are going to jail. There's people like you think of the base commander, the general, because it all fall, falls under him. He's in charge of everything that happens at that base, and he will be uh, held accountable. So that's why I say bravo. Um, justice will happen, and you have already succeeded. Your rallies have succeeded. Um, a lot of this you may not hear about, uh, but believe me, it will happen. In, in my military career field, in my time in the military, uh, 17 years, I worked with every, every branch of the service. I worked with just about every unit you could possibly think of. Um, I knew that sexual harassment did happen. Um, it never happened uh, that I've seen, um, but I knew it did happen, just like it happens in, in real life, right, in the regular world. Um, it has been known as the Boys Club for, for many, many years, and... You know, uh, and, and women, they take, they take a leap of faith, they take a chance to, when, when they get in there because there are those dark stories out there about, you know, sexual harassment and, um, you know, rapes and whatnot in the military. But I can assure you that the majority of uh, units and, and, and teams in the military, you know, men and women, we work together. Everything's joint. So we work together. Um, I can assure you that we all take care of each other. I mean, just as the girls would take care of the guys, we take care of them too. I and mean, yes, there's a majority of men in the military. But it's always been my experience to look at, at uh, a woman in your unit as that. She's our sister, man. Like, we whew, protect her like you wouldn't believe. Um, all the way down to frontline units. Uh, I remember one, once when I was in Iraq, um, we had a female. Uh, she was an interpreter and an interrogator. I worked in Intel. She was so far out past enemy lines with us, with our team, um, which is almost unheard of uh, to put a woman way far out there. I mean, there's women in combat. There's women in the Delta Force. I'm not supposed to say that, but there are. <laughs> um, you know, they're pretty far out there. And there's no way, no way we would even dream of, of, of sexually harassing her. I mean, we protected her like you would not believe. Actually, <laughs> she wouldn't even let me cuss uh, in front of her because sometimes, sometimes I can have a dirty mouth. Um, however, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's been my experience. However, I have known women who have been uh, sexually harassed and it destroyed them. And, I also, and I've also known some uh, who have been sexually harassed in the military and they bounced back bigger, stronger, and better than ever. And they use their story um, as, as a deterrent for others who may be um, 
who may find themselves in the position where they're sexually harassed. Which brings me to my next point. If you or someone you know has been sexually harassed, report it. If they're your best friend, report it. If you feel like you're betraying them, report it. If you gotta sell them out, be a snitch, report it. Does not matter. Get that message out there. Time is the important thing. Um, I'm reading here, I've been reading about this story and they, they say how the family, uh, the family told the lawyer that she was sexually harassed, that the person who killed her had sexually harassed her and that she was going to report him. Uh, hello. However, he killed her before that could happen. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know. I mean, we're here now. So the family saying that, I imagine they might feel some, feel some guilt and responsibility for her being dead then because they knew about something and they didn't report it. So that's, that's something none of us, uh, none of our business. That's also um, something that we can't really understand because that's on them. I mean, yes, they want, they want, to, they want to blame someone, obviously. Uh, uh, it hurts to know that, that the way the, 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 it hurts to know that their daughter and sister is dead and the way she was uh, brutally murdered. Uh, they do want justice. We all want justice. Um, but I don't know. I, I think I think that's the, that's their that's their issue. I, I don't really want to speak on that. Um, I know that Army said they did over 300 investigations and not anything led to the information they had didn't lead to them uh, uh, finding anything that happened to do with sexual harassment. Again, I'm not an investigator. I'm not in that family. All we know, I know what you know. Um, and I know that this young lady who, who did an honorable thing and wanted to serve her country and be a part of something bigger than herself is now dead. I know that the individual who killed her and the individual who helped him kill her are guilty. Um, the guy is dead, good. Uh, the, the female is in custody, good. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that she's not under the UCMJ because her ending would come very fast, very quick, uh, uh, and we'd never hear, from her, hear about her again. Now, I, I don't know if it's a cultural thing. You know, we're all about oh, let's take down the army now. Let's take down Fort Hood. Let's take down um, whatever it may be. I, I think that's I think that's a bad call, uh, and not just because of my military bias, which I do have one. Uh, however, I think it's a bad call. Uh, I, this seems to me like a very very um, specific, isolated incident uh, the, there, with a bad person involved. And, you know, there are bad people everywhere. Uh, they're in the military, they work at Starbucks, they're in the hospitals, they're in the police force, uh, they're teachers. Bad people slip through the cracks. And sometimes uh, you can't control that. Um, but what you can do is, is put some skin in the game and join the military, uh, join the police force, become a teacher. Right. So, so, so take this motivation um, and take this, take this passion and energy, and follow through with it. Uh, uh, that would be my challenge to you. My challenge to you is, if you want to change it, then join it. Be a part of it. Change it from the inside out. That's why I'm running for uh, city government in my city. I'm running for city council because I know who I am, and I know that uh, when I'm passionate, motivated, and, and determined to do something to solve a problem, I will get it done. No matter what, I'll get it done. Um, and I think something like someone like myself would be a good, um, a good addition to our city government. Um, so put some skin in the game. That's my challenge to all of you out there, um, so that something like this won't happen again. Um, yeah, I'm sorry uh, to the family of Vanessa. Um, I'm sorry to you, uh, Vanessa. This uh, absolutely did not have to happen. Uh, the system failed you. Uh, I feel some uh, little bit of responsibility uh, about that, um, but just because of my connection. However, um, we're here now. Um, so I would say let's not, uh, let's do everything we can to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, I know there are systems in place to make sure that won't happen again. And um, it's up to you. You guys are the future. So uh, we're depending on you to do it better than we did. Thank you.